What is up, guys? So I got a quick update for you guys on the unsealing process related to the Virginia Roberts versus Ghislaine Maxwell case. As you guys know, we have a planned hearing for September 22nd in the uh, appellate courts regarding the unsealing process and new rules were set down by Judge, Judge Preska. Uh, I, I believe like last week or the week before I covered that. And uh, the court, both the defendants and the plaintiffs are required to send letters to the John Doe's in the case and let them know, give them an opportunity opportunity to basically, you know, file their objections to the court because all the John Doe's have privacy rights. And since they're not criminals, since they're not alleged uh, criminals in this case, they have a chance to object to their privacy being violated, which is some something that anybody would, uh, you know, want to happen. If this happened to any of you guys, you guys probably don't want to be in the middle of this firestorm. So the court is giving an opportunity to for these people to, you know, file their objections with the case or with the court and the judge will judge them uh, whether their reasons are justified. And uh, she will take that those objections into account when proceeding over the case going forward. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to be this is this is a filing today on Friday the 11th from Sigrid McCauley aka Sigrid the Viking who I love it's one of my favorite people here she is the lawyer of Virginia Roberts and I call her uh, Sigrid the Viking because Sigrid is a beautiful Scandinavian name from Old Norse which means victory and I love calling her that so but anyways uh, extraneous BS uh, getting back to the story so Sigrid the Viking has filed a <clears throat> has filed her actions regard to what she has done and she has sent out notifications to John Doe's 92 through 185. Yes, you did hear that right. And we're going to go over that. Uh, the reason I'm doing this video is just to appreciate how many goddamn John Doe's there are here because I had no idea. Okay. The only John Doe we know so far is the one who's been making a lot of noise. And that's John Doe number three. As you guys know, he's been filing suits uh, to make sure that his identity is not released. So we know about him, but there are a lot more John Doe. So I want to go through this real fast. So this is Secret the Viking speaking. I represent the plaintiff, Virginia Roberts, in the above captioned matter. Pursuant to this court's August 26, 2020 order directing the original parties to serve non-party notices on all remaining non-parties, EFC number uh, 1107, the original parties agreed to split responsibility for mailing non-party no notices. So basically, um, Virginia Roberts, lawyer, uh, Sigrid the Viking, and also the uh, the other side, uh, Gillian Maxwell's, uh, Maxwell's lawyers, um, Menninger, I think her name is, and whoever her partner is, they're mailing uh, number uh, J John Doe's 1 through 1 through 91. So that'll be that'll be done by Gillian Maxwell's lawyers and non-party notices 92, 92 through 185 are being mailed by <clears throat> Sigrid the Viking and um, uh, Virginia Roberts aside. So <clears throat> so let's keep going here. Pursuant to the updated order, the protocol for unsealing decided motions number 1108. I used best efforts to identify the most current addresses for John Doe number two, 90, 92 through uh, John Doe 185. So I mailed the following documents to the non-parties listed in paragraph six and seven below. So th these are the paperwork, the pieces of papers that they that she sent that they're sending to the John Doe's notice to non-parties of possible unsealing of sealed documents. So because their names are in these documents, so the court has to let them know and give them an opportunity to, you know, give their own input because their privacy is going to be violated and their names are going to be released to the public. Non-parties request for excerpts of sealed documents an acknowledgement of court order and protocol governing excerpts number three non-parties objections objection to unsealing so they have an opportunity to file their objections to the court to add, to make sure that the court knows why they don't want their information released number four the order and protocol for unsealing decided motions so this is just to inform them how the process works on September 10th, 2020, I sent the non-party notices via first-class certified mail, returned, received, requested, and for international addresses via FedEx to the following non-party. So this is how many non-parties there are, 185. And even this is amazing to me, and I follow every step of this case, because I've never seen a, a complete list numbered out like this, right? Because we've only heard from one John Doe, really. I mean, we heard technically we heard from three because three people responded back to the court so far. But um, 
and we all, but we only one one John Doe has been very public to let let the court know that he doesn't want his name released. So I've been focusing on him. But as you can see here, 92 through 185, that's the letters that she has sent. And um, the other uh, Gillian Maxwell's lawyers have sent the notices to parties one through 91. So that's that. On September 11th, I sent the non-party notices, notices via first class certified mail and international addresses via FedEx to the following non-parties, 97, 111, 116. So basically everything that's not included here, I'm guessing. Or she'd sent it again. That's, that'll be weird, but whatever. No, yeah, they're not, inclu they're not included here. So they she sent the distinction here, I think, is the uh, method of mailing. Why or why is she? Oh, it's the date. Okay, so she sent these, uh, those on the tenth, these on the eleventh. Okay, I was wondering. That's weird. I have not sent non-party notices to the following non-parties because using best efforts, I have been unable to locate an address for them. So all of these have not been notified because there was an address change, or they moved out. Um, whatever you know. I have not. We don't know exactly, but most likely they they relocated. For next, I have not sent the non-party notices to the following deceased non-party. So these people are dead and therefore, you know, <laughs> not relevant to the case anymore. But uh, nevertheless, sad. I hereby declare under penalty for of perjury that the following foregoing statements are true and correct. Uh, signed September 11th, which is today. Respectfully, Sigrid the Viking and filed with the court. So there you go. I just want to do a quick update on this. Don't want to spend too much time on it, but um, I got two more videos coming out. They should be hitting you guys tomorrow um, and it should be pretty good. And uh, yeah, that's about it for this video. Um, once again, Sigrid, Sigrid the Viking is at it again. Uh, totally love her. <laughs> but uh, with that being said, I'll see you guys. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for this video. <clears throat> I'll see you guys in my next video. If you want to support my work, check out my Patreon. It's on the uh, bottom right-hand corner of this video. With that being said, I'll see you guys in my next one. Peace. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end guys. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch and consider some of the ideas I present in my videos. If you appreciate my evidence-based, non-partisan approach to reporting legal and political news, please consider supporting me on Patreon. My long-term goal on this channel is to get to a point where I can do news analysis full-time. Grassroots funding is the best way for independent news reporters to remain uncorrupted by corporate influences. Even if you can only afford $1 a month, those dollars add up in the aggregate, and it will be much appreciated by me. With that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. As always, peace.